Hi folks, welcome to the second paper in the Ethereal Mechanics series. This video will give an, a quick overview of the second Ethereal Mechanics paper called Constructs. Constructs represent a new foundation for scientific progress. Okay, and we have to adopt these things in order for scientific progress to go forward because the old constructs are just holding us back. And those constructs include a formal adoption of the Ethereal Mechanics Pantheon of Scientific Units. If you have been a Patreon subscriber about two or three years ago, I released a preliminary set of those units, and those units have evolved to the point where I'm finally happy with them, and now it's time to adopt them because they're starting to make help us make progress. Full adoption. We partially have been adopting the 24th rule of acquisition, but now that I finally figured out how to unpack the, the variable G, it's all the doors are open and it's time to do all of the unpacking of arbitrary constants. Now, I don't mean arbitrary constants in the, like I mean like arbitrary units, like the meter and the second are arbitrary units. Those are okay. Arbitrary constants we need to get rid of. Now, if you want more detail on that, the link for rule of acquisition 24 will be put in the low bar and you can go watch it on your own and give you the full detail of that. So that's not really included in the paper other than by reference. So uh, that part is handled by the rule of acquisition 24 video. And the formal adoption of the new force field philosophy and the new rule of acquisition 2015, uh, rule of acquisition 15, the correlation obscuration trap. This has been a major mind breakthrough. This is just totally opening up. And there's the full detail of this rule of acquisition is the uh, full detail is in the paper, but there will be a separate release later of just the rule of acquisition 15 with I'm going to add even more detail. This is a incredible breakthrough in scientific thinking and logic and how to view science. Um, anyway. Okay, so again, a lot of these items have been in the works for many years okay like this has been like two or three years this is 2018 or 2017 this force field philosophy i've been thinking about for a year uh now it's time to really adopt that philosophy okay because things are, are breaking quickly rabbit holes are opening at an unbelievable rate and there's another breakthrough that's helping cause this it'll be in a future release and it's providing closure on a lot of these constructs a lot of these things like i said have been in the works for a couple of years, but there's been things that are missing, things I wasn't quite happy with, other things that I kind of needed to develop before I could say, yeah, we need to use these completely. All that has come to fruition all at once, pretty much with the most recent uh, breakthroughs. Okay, and the new ways have exposed the path forward and has illuminated uh, an interesting trap that has caused serious confusion delays. Again, that's restating what rule of acquisition 15 is. And we're going to adopt all the constructs at once because I don't want to go forward and adopt things piecemeal where I have to say, well, this particular paper uses these conventions here, but those conventions here, and this next paper uses these, and you know, just adopt them all at once. And then in the papers going forward, just reference this paper and this video to let people know what the change is. Here's the release schedule. This is a, a little view of the paper down here. This paper is already on file with the uh, Library of Congress for copyright protection. I'm doing the copyright only to prove that I had this idea at this date. That's mostly the reason for the copyright. Okay, um, and so in this video, we're going to do a general overview of the paper. We're not going to release everything of the paper because parts of the paper are going to be released by other means. Okay, so we're just going to give a general overview now. The paper is going to be available to first class passengers tonight. It'll be available to everybody on the 4th of July. I picked that because that's a Sunday. I do most of my releases on Sundays. Uh, it'll be released at my website, and you'll be able to search the website to go find it. It'll be on the pay page for Ethereal Mechanics. Okay, and again, the parts that I'm not covering tonight will be published in separate videos because it makes more sense. I can give more detail to them other than this quick overview video and give them better treatment. Okay, so let's start off with the new units. In Ethereal Mechanics going forward, all scientific units are formed from charge, distance in meters, and time in seconds. No longer is a kilogram considered, except when taking measurements using old instruments that are calibrated in the old units. So in other words, 
when we measure from a digital multimeter or an oscilloscope or whatever, whatever, we, we're going to have to convert those to match the new units that we're going to get by theoretical, uh, by, theor by theory. Okay, and my Patreon members may remember a release of new units a few years back, but there was problems there. I had, not only did we have new units, I tried coming up with new names for the new units, like, um, like uh, force was going to be squameters, which was short for square ampere meters. <laughs> and it just became, it just became too unwieldy to make all those changes. Uh, and so I have to use the new units because they're working. But instead of trying to come up and confuse everybody with new names and new symbols for the units, I'm adopting all the old names and old symbols for the units, just changing the units themselves. So that way there, a jewel is still going to be a jewel, but there's going to be the idea that there's the legacy jewel and the natural jewel. Okay, and we're going to come up with a convention for keeping them straight. That'll be talked about in a few minutes. So the first, now, now most of the units keep the old names and the old symbols. The exception to this rule is inertia because inertia has been called the kilogram in the past. Unfortunately, the kilogram has had a dual meaning, meaning quantity of stuff and inertia of stuff. Okay, many years ago, the quantity of stuff and the weight of stuff was considered one and the same. And quantity and weight had to be disambiguated. And because of Einstein's principle of equivalence, weight and inertia are the same thing. So if weight has to be disambiguated from mass, then inertia also has to be disambiguated from mass. And that, I have many, many different arguments to say this has to be done. Okay, because the kilogram, the, 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 the correlation, because the kilogram, the quantity of stuff, and inertia of stuff have been so highly correlated, that is an obscuration that we didn't see, that we have two different things, okay, that are so correlated we think they're the same thing and when they're not. Okay, and we go into more detail on that in the paper because there's, there's certain tells you could have seen where people should have said, hey, wait a minute, inertia, because when we, when we move things at relativistic speeds, well, let me back up. Okay, back in the old days when they brought a bar of gold to the mountaintop, they found its weight changed, but obviously its mass didn't change. That should have been the tell. If the weight changed, but you still have the same quantity of stuff, that was the tell that says we have to come up with a different way to, to quant a quantity of stuff. Now, physicists, when they send particles into accelerators and their speed increases, they find that their quote-unquote mass increases. Now, wait a minute. The quantity of stuff didn't change, it's, but its inertia changed. Okay, and the same thing. If the inertia changed, then inertia and, qu and quantity of stuff are not the same thing. And that's another tell that they need to have been disambiguated. Okay, so we can't call inertia by kilograms anymore. And if you want some background on why it's these units. Okay, again, we're going to, the rule of acquisition 24 goes over this. And if you watch the foundation series playlist, we will go all the way through to this. That basically matter can be defined as two charges separated by a distance. See, these are the natural units. The natural units show the underlying system. Two charges separated by a distance. Okay, it's a thing of beauty. So, and that unit, the squ uh, square coulomb per meter, is now the units of inertia, which we're calling the burl. Burl is short for burliness, which means heaviness. Okay, we wanted burl because we can make it into a plural, like burls for plural. Okay, now there's going to be a more advanced release of the model of matter, which is going to cover other things like magnetic moments and uh, time dilation and all that other stuff. And that's going to be a future release. There is an older release. It's listed in the paper of the older document. Okay, force now, because it's not no longer force equals mass times acceleration. It's force equals inertia times acceleration. And therefore, the new units of force, the new Newton, is square amperes. Of course, now, if you were considering inertial force, inertial force, the reaction of a body trying to accelerate, that's really minus BA. 
Okay, this would be applied force, and inertial force would be negative BA. Okay, now because work is force times distance, and it's the same units for energy, uh, and those are joules, this is now the new units of the joule are square ampere meters. Okay, now this is an interesting thing. Because the new model of matter and, and what's in the paper, if you, have to, if you can read the paper now, we've been clearly saying in the ethereal mechanics that the energy, this energy, the thing we've been calling the joule, is only applicable to matter. Okay, there's no way of taking these items here and rationalizing these items for electromagnetic radiation. Because charge does not radiate into space. And this is one of the other arguments that there must be a more fundamental form of energy that is free of matter. And that form of energy has to be more fundamental. Okay, so this energy that we're talking about here is the energy of a state of a second order system of pretons. And this energy and this inertia is also a state of a second order system of pretons. So when matter gives up its energy in the form of radiation, it doesn't lose mass. It just changes the state of the pretons. Okay, so we don't give up energy. We just change. When we radiate energy into space from a piece of matter, when electron excited electron gives up energy, it's not losing mass. All it is is the electrical state of the pretons that make up the mass, they're changing their state relative to each other. Okay, just like a spring. When a spring gives up energy, the distance between the items separated by the spring change. Okay, when the energy is lost in the spring, you're not losing mass. You're just changing the state of the two items separated by the spring. Same thing. When, when matter gives up its energy in the form of radiation, it's not losing mass. It's just changing its internal states. That is the, one of the, more, the other reasons why we need a more fundamental form of energy. Because we need a form of energy that exists outside of matter. This form of energy only exists in matter. And actually, the way I just said that to you is probably better, written, better said than it was written in the paper. So <laughs> every time I say it, I get better at it. Okay, power of watts is uh, current squared times velocity, which is watts. And that same thing is, um, there's your three, basically it's a time derivative of energy. Electrical pressure, okay, people sometimes say electrical, uh, not pressure, uh, electrical potential for volts. Uh, that's, potential is a little bit misleading. Potential implies a potential field. The potential field implies an electric field. Okay, electrical pressure can be from magnetic sources and origin, which are not potential fields. And so we need a little more of an agnostic term for electrical pressure. Pressure is agnostic. The other thing we need is we need an agnostic field definition. Okay, a field is any force per Coulomb phenomenon. Like if I take Coulomb's model and I divide both sides by charge, in the old days, you would get a big E for E field, and that by now, and so an E field was a potential field, which would have been the source of your voltage and the, the, the forcing action of your voltage to give you a voltage. Okay, but we also can do the same thing with new induction, which gives us a force from a magnetic phenomenon. Okay, and so therefore we still want to be able, and we want to be able to set these equal to each other. You know, one field set equal to the other. But when you're calling one E and the other one can't be E because it's not an electric field, you get into all kinds of confusion. So we're going, developing a new agnostic field definition. And the, the, the units here are actons because this force, actons, charge, whatever. This is one of the only other exceptions where we're introducing a new field um, units right now anyway. Okay, so... Um, an A field, it's an action field if you want to call it that, that's fine. We use the term action field uh, because and it's the, the, the units are actons, which are coulombs per second squared. Okay, that's what you get when you divide force by charge. Okay, and so that gives you an A field. And this is a, not to be confused with area 
because area would not have a vector A. This is a vector field. And because it's a vector field, it's represented with bold characters. That's our convention. Whereas the symbol for area it would be just a capital A that's not bold. So that would be the how we distinguish um, between area or action and area going forward. Okay. We're still adopting the H field from legacy because that was already in natural units. We didn't really have to do anything to this, so we're keeping this as, and this is temporary, this is deprecated, because this will be replaced by the vector ampere field, uh, which will be formally introduced in any new electromagnetism v version 5. For my Patreon folks, you're already aware of the vector ampere field. Um, it's not going to be that much different from that, just probably more formally defined. Okay, and the convention going forward, because in certain places we're going to have to mix old and new units, especially since, you know, legacy equipment still measure, reads out stuff in the legacy units. So in that case, we're going to, the new units, the natural units are going to be in black type, and anything that's in, in legacy units are going to be dark blue. And since we're getting rid of constants, the only arbitrary constant we're keeping is KM, because at KM is the conversion uh, not of all the units, it's only those units that have mass in them, kilograms. The way you get rid of kilograms in something is you divide by km. So we take the legacy unit, which has kilograms in the, in the numerator, and we divide by km. That puts those units into the new form here, the natural units, which are free of that obscuring nonsense called the kilogram. Okay, now these, what I'm about to talk about are items that are in the paper that are not talked about in this video. And the reason why is because I can give these items better treatment elsewhere. But I'm just going to make you aware of them so that, you know, if you want to read the paper now and not wait until they're released, you know, come on, sign up, be a Patreon, be a first class, patron, first class passenger, and you'll have access to the paper tonight. The field force duality. Okay, there'll be plenty of examples of this in the new electromagnetism V5 release, which hopefully will be 2021 late summer. Rule of acquisition 15, the correlation obscuration trap. Uh, this will be published as a rule of acquisition. I don't haven't I didn't give it the number in the paper because I wasn't sure of the number that I was going to give it until now. Okay, that'll be published in the rules of acquisition series of videos, and I'll be able to give a lot more detail to that and show you all the interesting things that this thing has triggered. Beautiful things this thing has triggered. This was total, when this came about, it was amazing how the connection made. It was just like, oh, it just opened up all these things that have been blocking me because they didn't make sense. Now I understand the, the trap. It's an interesting trap. Uh, and if you want a little understanding of the trap is everything that glitters is not gold. That's the simplest way to say that. Just because it glitters like gold, it correlates to gold, doesn't mean it's gold. And just because jewels correlate to energy, doesn't mean it's energy. <laughs> That's the simplest way to say this. And I actually, I'll probably end up using that in the video. Uh, again, just I've already talked about this, the more fundamental form of energy. This is a tough one because this takes a lot of language to go and take you down the rabbit hole on this. And so it probably end up being released in its own paper, but the interesting thing, it needs to be released prior to me using in one of the other papers. So um, I don't know where this is going to be released yet. Okay, this is, uh, the. I'm going to show you a list of how I think papers are going to be released. It may not be that. This is the list of how I think papers are going to be released. Basically, uh, because of these changes, the big paper I've been working on, electrogravity, has to be broken up into smaller bite-sized pieces to make it. It's, it's over like 150, 200 pages now. I cannot, it's too big, and I, I, I'm going to have to break it up into smaller pieces to make it easier to release. And so we can get start getting stuff out faster, because a lot of that stuff that's in there now is going to change because of these new revelations. Uh, there was a lot of things in the paper I'd put placeholders in because I wasn't really sure yet. But now we're sure, but now those placeholders are going to be expanded by 10, 15, 20 pages each of new stuff. And I, this is going to make this electrogravity an insanely big paper. And it would, so I'm breaking it up. So some of these papers, like matter and gravity, are, is a subsection of electrogravity. Pretonic fields, 
uh, maybe actually be confined in NEV5. Primordial energy. I don't know where this is going to be released, but that's the new energy paradigm. Oh, those people in my Patreon site, you do have access to the earlier version of the new energy paradigm where I was speculating about this. That release is still only for Patreon members. Because what's going to happen in the future, I'm no longer going to be releasing speculation papers on YouTube. I'm only going to release the speculation. Well, I'll talk about the speculation in a moment. So anyway, you can read the rest of these on their own. Okay, so what had happened is a lot of the things that I put in the early video series, the EM EMV series of videos, which there are three playlists uh, for Ethereal Mechanics, which is the stuff when I started the YouTube site back in, I think it was 2011, there was a lot of things that I wasn't sure about in Ethereal Mechanics. So all I did was, you said I was stuck. All I did was start making videos, explaining to people where, you know, what Ethereal Mechanics is about and... In making those videos, they helped me rationalize some of the paths forward and opened up a lot of the rabbit holes. And so as the video series progressed, I was actually able to make progress on Ethereal Mechanics. And a lot, But still, there was a lot of things that were still just speculation because even though I rationalized everything logically that it must be this, I couldn't make the connections to what it should have been. And so, like for example... In EMV 021, I knew matter has to feed, and I could rationalize that matter has to feed to exist, and that rationalization of uh, matter feeding on the ether dovetailed with the new gravity paper release that was released in like 1999. But I could not get a pretonic feeding model up until recently because things were obscured because of weird correlations. Okay? And I'm, I'm, but now, but because I can see through all these stupid correlations that are obscuring everything, I can make the connections now that I couldn't make before. So a lot of these things that I had speculated about in those video series that I was absolutely certain that's the way things had to be, are starting to come true. We're starting to link them now because we can now see through the obscurations, okay? And we can make break free from the old ways of thinking because of this logic about comp obscure. Ob obscuration and so the amazing thing is most of the things in those speculation videos are turning out to be correct okay granted some things got obsolete some things were a little bit wrong but most of the things are turning out to be valid so if you want to see where the ethereal mechanics is going you can go back to those videos you know and there, a lot of this stuff there is going to work out to be true again i mean things are maturing fast and so what i'm not going to do um, is I'm not going to do any more speculation videos on YouTube. I will retain the speculation for my Patreon members only. Because then you'll be able to see things years before, like the, the new units. You, you've known about those for two years now. And you knew where I wanted to go with them. It's just only until recently I couldn't make the connection to get there, but now we can. Okay, so I'm not going to release any more speculation on YouTube. YouTube will only be the relationships that I'm sure about that we can experimentally validate. So if a lot of you people that are my YouTube folks, you want to come and you want to get inside track, it's only $5 a month. It's cheaper than most of the porn sites most of you guys, you know, subscribe to. And I want to thank my Patreon subscribers. Your support has helped expand operations and, you know, uh, there's my, some Patreon members that have really helped by finding links to things I did not know about, some experiments that were really interesting. And, um, you know, then you have Tibor that's always helped me find math mistakes when I made them. Thanks, Tibor. And um, Sebastian, thank you for running the blog site. I really appreciate that. I really do. Um, you guys have gone. Uh, and, and then there's Patreon members that have been, you know, paying you know upwards of fifty dollars a month to support this you guys i want to do something special for you guys i don't know what yet but you know i'm even thinking about if we're ever able to develop some um, patents and technology and really make some money on this as far as selling technology uh, that would form a corporation and start doing you know stock sharing or give sh give stocks out proportional to what people have paid in subscriber dues because patreon remembers all the amounts you've ever paid so I'd go back to everybody from, you know, bridge officers all the way down to supporters and maybe we'll do some kind of stock sharing thing based on the money that it paid. I don't know yet. That's 
I just we got to get there first before we can make any decision like that. So, um, but anyway, that's what I'm thinking about. So just let you guys know what I'm thinking about in the future because I want to give those people that have been supporting me, especially those bridge officers and um, that have been paying fifty dollars a month. I really, really appreciate that. Okay, so if you're not a subscriber, a Patreon subscriber, please help. Um, again, there's going to be a lot of things now that are not going to ever be released to the public until they're finally done. So it'll be if you want to get in for five dollars a month, you'll see the speculation I'm working on. Again, a lot of that stuff I speculated upon years ago, it's finally coming true because we made the connections. And if you want to see stuff years before it's finally solidified and get an in-ground, then $5 a month is not a lot to pay for that. I don't think so, especially since all the time I spend all my free time on this. Okay, and and I and for all the money my Patreon subscribers have been, I've doubled the money as far as the investment in this effort. I am all in on this. So, you know, thank you, everybody.